remote meeting law provisions, suspending certain provisions of, of that law. All, uh, all votes will be taken by roll call. Uh, if you're on Zoom, please ensure that your Zoom name accurately identifies you. Uh, please mute your microphone to limit background noise. And please use the raise your hand feature if you'd like to comment during the public, uh, during the public comment time. Uh, when called on, please identify yourself by name and address uh, for the record and limit your comments to one or two minutes, please. And if there's any technical difficulties where um, Zoom becomes unavailable, if we cannot recover within five minutes, uh, all the, the meeting will be uh, uh, closed and all uh, business will move to the next uh, meeting of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail Advisory Committee. Uh, as always, I um, invite uh, the public to send any and all comments or input or ideas to bfrtac at concordma.gov. That's our, our mailbox um, and we look forward to input. The minutes for tonight's meeting will be taken by committee member Adrian uh, Boardman. Adrian, thank you again for your service to the committee. This time I'm gonna ask committee members to indicate that they are present. Uh, if you would say present when I call your name. Uh, Richard Follander. Present. Um, John Soden is absent. Uh, Dave Edelman is absent. Adrian Boardman. Present. Dorcas Miller. Present. Uh, Sam Stearns. Present. Thank you. Uh, Tracy Hansen. Present. Mary Beth Barker. Present. And Nat Welch is present. Uh, with seven members, uh, seven of nine members here, we have a quorum and this meeting can continue. Our first agenda item is to approve the minutes from the March 17th meeting of this committee. Are there any edits or comments that committee members have uh, with regard to the minutes? Yeah, that's good to me. Move to accept minutes. Uh, uh, second. Anybody? Second. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, so we'll take a roll call to uh, approve the minutes. Uh, Mr. Follander? Aye. Ms. Boardman? Aye. Ms. Miller? Aye. Mr. Stearns? Aye. Uh, Ms. Hanson? Aye. Ms. Barker? Aye. And Mr. Welch is aye. Uh, the minutes are approved unanimously. Thank you. Uh, next item on our agenda is to um, hear from the Director of Planning and Land Management, Marcia Rasmussen, uh, providing her monthly update. Marcia, you have the floor or the screen. <laughs> um, Dorcas, I'm sorry that I, I sent my um, agenda memo out to you late. Um, it was a little bit of a crazy afternoon and I overlooked your name on the distribution list, so I apologize for that. Um, 2A is open. 2B is uh, they are out and working. Um, the landscape subcontractor will, um, continued work on March 28th. So they are loaming and seeding along the sides of the trail itself. Um, these operations are intended to stabilize some of the areas where there has been erosion um, and issues raised by natural resources. But there are several areas such as the bio basins, the rock fill slope, at the north abutment, the form liner staining and anti graffiti coating areas um, that will continue to be maintained with erosion controls, which are include silt fence, hay bales, and the compost filler tubes until they are completed. Um, the equipment lifts, scaffolding, and foot traffic in these areas um, would prevent any temporary seeding from growing and uh, providing that erosion control. Um, the they will continue to be mained throughout the re remainder of the project. And then the camera traps for the wildlife monitoring installed March 4th and the tracking pads were to go in the week of March 28th. Um, additionally, I had a request from MassDOT and the contractor to consider uh, relocating the, um, there were two benches and a, a, a paved rest area. Uh, at station 4825, which was immediately adjacent to the um, existing DOT cemetery site or DOC Department of Corrections site. Um, and because that side of the hill is very steep and the um, markers for the cemetery plots are right on top of that slope, 
Uh, they asked if they could relocate that to the opposite side, the Jarrow Park and Warner's Pond side of the trail where it is level and flat. So um, I felt that that was a reasonable request and um, approved it after talking with Delia and with Kate Hodges, who's responsible for the, the Jarrow Park project. For the phase 2C update, um, the, the subcommittee met this past Tuesday with representatives from um, the police department and from Concord Public Works to discuss the seven scenarios that were presented on March 17th. Um, and I'm going to let Tracy Hansen um, do the update on that meeting. I think she will be prepared. So that will be coming um, later. So I'll continue. Um, then uh, the last half mile of phase 2C or what is now 2D um, will be part of project 2D that Mass DOT has not returned um, a response or has not provided a response to our consultants letter regarding the granite mile markers and the interpreted signs nor the additional funding that are need that is needed uh, as was identified in last month's update. But I did um, reach out to Mass DOT regarding the encroachment of the house at 70 White, White Ave. And if there were any additional steps necessary for the town to take to address this encroachment. Um, the representative from Mass DOT right of way su uh, suggested reaching out to the rail division to determine how important is it to address this encroachment and um, to identify those steps if necessary. So I will be doing that um, once I hear back from Mass DOT who that person is, um, hopefully tomorrow. And then the White Pond Advisory Committee submitted a letter to the select board um, recommending that the proposed five foot opening on the fence that is going to be installed between the rail trail and White Pond um, that had been intended to allow access to an existing trail, that their recommendation is that it be closed. Um, so this suggestion is going to be discussed with the Trails Committee and with Natural Resources Commission for input to the Bruce Ruin Rail Trail at your next meeting in May. Uh, the opening in, fen in the fence was recommended at this location because the existing trail and the number of people who regularly use this point of access to the town's land further south. Um, as I was, um, Josh, uh, the White Pond Advisory Committee Chair, Josh Galper, asked for an explanation. And um, I mentioned that I didn't think it made sense to close off this existing path, which is so heavily used throughout the year to access public lands, even though the concerns of the WPAC are for uh, the summer months. And the other point of access to the town land is located further south and requires scrambling up log steps that are not in good condition. Um, we were not allowed to replace those steps. Um, according to Mass DOT, because uh, they are not accessible. So um, allowing access to the existing trail is a more practical and reasonable condition, um, solution to this issue. Um, so it's going to be an interesting conversation, and I think it will be a wider conversation. Um, prohibiting access to town lands, I think, is, is not the position that the Bruce Ruin Rail Trail Advisory Committee should be supporting. That's my personal opinion. Um, Phase 2D in, from Sudbury, they have not yet updated any information on their website. Uh, so the last information posted is from January and I will be reaching out to the project manager in Sudbury to see if there's anything going on. Um, I assume that project is, is progressing, but um, they are not communicating that through their web pages. Um, community Connections Grant, um, Public Works is currently focused on uh, preparing for Patriots Day. So I'm going to wait until after uh, April 20th to uh, ask when they are going to put in the, the shelters and bike racks in, in the West Concord commuter lot area. Um, and uh, hopefully it will be done before May 20, 31st of this year. And then for the Concord Prison Cemetery, um, Richard Follander and I did attend that meeting on March 23rd with members of Concord Prison Outreach to discuss possible fundraising ideas. And so next steps include um, getting estimates for some of the in, in, um, items that we want included in the project and then preparing outreach documents um, for grant writing and for seeking contributions from um, the public. So that's my update for this week or this month. Any questions? Yeah, member questions? 
Um, quick question. Um, I'm looking at the map of Bruce Freeman Mail Trail that's on our advisory committee website. Mm -hmm. And in orange, it has current construction 2021. Is that the phase 2B that you were talking about? Where you're um, adding soil because of erosion and um, yes, you can hear it if you want. But yeah, okay. I'm assuming that's what it is. Okay. Other questions from member committee members? I have a I have a couple just so I'm clear, um, Marcia, on the, the 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 fence question. We're going to wait until natural resources and the trail committee comes back to to with with a. Once they have the conversation, and then does it come to our plate for some reason? Um, yes. Okay. Okay. Good. So that'll be a future. I, I think yep. having more complete information rather than um, just addressing one committee's concerns, it, it would be better to have multiple groups all at once. Um, Got it. Okay, that's good. Um, and then, should we um, incorporate the community con connections grant when they actually put it in? Should we, Richard? Should we include that in the celebration for the bridge opening, since it's taken almost as long? What do you think? <laughs> if we do that, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's good. Sounds perfect. Um, what's the what's the, uh, the the fundraising total that we're looking for for the um, the prison outreach? Do we have an idea yet? We don't. No. Okay. Okay. That, that's why I'm trying to get an estimate on some of the elements, and it, it will all depend on what is identified. Um, you know, uh, benches can range in a variety of different costs, right. as well as um, the types of interpretive panel or information that we provide. Okay, good. Okay. There are no other questions. Um, I think we should move on to... Um, the next piece of committee business. Um, I feel a little less prepared today, but um, I know that Tracy is prepared uh, to report out um, on the on the subcommittee's work. And I just want to remind the public and and ourselves that um, our task is as um, given to us by the select board was to provide a recommend, written recommendation to the select board on conceptual redesign of Junction Park to ensure safety and separation of two types of users, the wheeled vehicles and um, pedestrians in the park. And to, to come up with a recommendation for the short term that um, augments what's already there and helps address potential increased ridership due to the completion of the Route 2 bridge in Crossing Fingers, July of 2022. Um, so that's what we're doing. So Tracy, do you want to um, please go ahead with Kind of an update from the committee, a subcommittee. And I think Great. And can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. And perfect. And now I'm not muted, mm -hmm. which helps. All right. Great. So it looks like the members of the public that are here are familiar with our project. Um, it's only one name I don't recognize. So, with that in mind, um, our update since last month is that so if you those of you who were here last month when we met we had presented seven initial concepts there were six that were meant to be long term one that was short term there was an in-depth conversation that we had um, at that meeting and then we also had a follow-up meeting just this week april 5th with some members of the town we had the town engineer um, public safety officer as well as um, the head of public works join and it was at the March meeting that we had initial pros and cons. Uh, it was what we discussed for each concept. And we had, we did have some issues hearing people at that meeting. And frankly, there was so much, um, so much input from the public. It was a great conversation, but as a result, we had to cut it short. And so we asked members of the public to submit um, in writing any additional comments that they wanted to make. And we did have quite a few people reach out, which is great. Tracy, if I could add that, that that information has been posted as of today um, to the uh, your to your web page. Great. Okay. I think that's you're referring to the presentation from March 17th. Both the presentation and the comments received. Oh, right. And the comments. Uh, yes. You're from right. March 17th up until um, April 1st. There are maybe a half dozen additional ones that were received um, after your subcommittee meeting yesterday that I have yet to uh, get posted. Okay, great. So we'll have more to review. So keep the comments coming. Um, they're definitely appreciated. 
um, especially any new ideas that haven't yet been presented. So on that note, sharing some of the key themes, because I imagine many of you haven't had a chance to read um, the various, um, various emails that were shared. Some of the, the themes that have arrived, uh, have uh, risen are basically the challenge of just making everybody happy. We know that we have multiple types of users, different ages using the park. We have people who are using it as a means of transit. We have other people that are using it because they're using the rail trail or the people that are really there to enjoy the park itself. And we have many things to balance like the, the park feel, the aesthetics. Um, and then of course we need to accommodate the fact that it is a rail trail right of way. And what was clear in the feedback presented both at the March 17th meeting, the meeting this week, as well as the comments received was that we continue, and this is really not anything new, but we continue to have very different perspectives on the purpose of Junction Park. And so I just wanna remind everyone that um, where we are today is that the park is a park, but it's also a rail trail right of way. And so whatever we come up with, we do have to accept that reality and make the best of it. Um, one piece that was apparent to me personally, at least, and I think it was more apparent on Tuesday was that what we all care about, no matter what our view is on, on what the park should be, what this particular part of land um, should look like, is that everybody wants to be able to move freely within the park. If you're on your, your own two feet or in a wheelchair, you wanna be able to get where you're going safely. Um, and we wanna be able to go where you wanna go. If you're on a bike or rollerblades or whatever for that aspect, you also want to be able to go and you want to be able to proceed in your your means of transit um, but everybody um, just wants to do that safely so i think that's worth sharing um, this idea of having a clear a clear path no matter how you're going through the park was important there also was agreement um, also not new that the train tracks are dangerous and we need to do something about that um, there was also, and there's a lot of disagreement as well, of course, which is, which is good, healthy discourse. Um, so different views on the importance of maintaining the parking, whether that is good to keep um, or whether there's a benefit to putting the rail trail there potentially. And there was an interesting idea of putting a boardwalk over the retention pond because we realized that the retention area serves a valuable purpose for 100 year floods. And um, I thought actually that was an interesting solution to consider. So that brings us to our focus today. What we really wanted to figure out is the short-term plan. I would like, um, and this is something I've discussed with, with Nad and Adrian or members of the subcommittee, um, is really to figure out the short-term tonight so that we can spend the next two, two months focused on the long-term solution, which is arguably more important than the short-term, which is just something we need to implement um, to um, you know, have a solution as soon as possible when the bridge opens. So before we had presented a short-term concept that was frankly not well received. Um, what it was, was one that physically separated rail trail users from non-rail trail users. And it did that by having a physical separation not in the middle, but it actually allowed eight feet for the rail trail and four feet for the non rail trail area. So the pros of that were that it did physically separate, providing some additional safety measures, and it did clarify where the rail trail goes. But the concerns that were raised were that it provided very little space for people not using the rail trail to move around. Only four feet isn't really that wide. People wanted to be able to walk side by side. And there were some concerns about actually you know, creating a physical barrier might actually increase people's speed who are on wheels because they will feel like they can go faster. Um, there's also concerns about attractiveness and inhibiting access to parking and, and other areas. There was a request to see the concept of objects being in the way um, on purpose, basically. Um, I think the term is chicane and the idea is to slow traffic by making it a little bit harder to move around. Um, so we did put a couple concepts together that, um, that are on that, in that vein. And what we started thinking about is maybe we basically need some different expectations for short term. 
this is a difficult project and we might be able to get close to perfection <laughs> with our long term and I say might. Uh, but in the short term, I think we have to be realistic and realize we're not probably not going to get everything we want. So maybe the approach to the short term actually becomes a little bit different and more about um, encouraging people to be respectful of others, encouraging them to think about this is our shared space. Let's do the right thing. We're all responsible adults or if we're, we're kids, we, we know how we should behave. Um, so that's kind of where we were heading with our thinking. So next I'll present three short-term concepts, which we're calling eight, nine, and 10. And what I'd like to do is introduce each one and then have us discuss pros and cons of the different elements of each. And then I'd like to either choose one of the three or decide which of the elements of the three we wanna turn into a short-term plan. But ultimately what I'd like to do is decide which plan we wanna to send to the town and agree that it's the right short-term solution and then focus on long-term. But long-term will be a different discussion that we will not have today. So today will just be short-term. Okay, thanks. So the first one is this idea of, of chicane, basically putting objects in the way to slow traffic. And this particular plan does this by adding planters, which are those little green circles and just sprinkling them around, um, little haphazardly. Um, the only ones that are really in any particular location is whenever there was an intersection, I put it at the middle, hoping that that would slow traffic. And then around this turn, since we want the rail trail users to go left um, in the north section, trying to curve the planters that way. And then this particular plan has more seating areas to the north, which I thought would also serve as another indication that this is a pedestrian area um, and further encourage people to get off any wheels or go slow or basically not cross, right? <laughs> not cross there is the goal. Um, I also recognize the need that if cyclists are coming from the north and they're actually coming from the train tracks through the parking lot and they actually think that the rail trail goes straight here, I think we're probably gonna need some signage saying the trail doesn't connect here. You need to go down to the right to find the actual place to start the rail trail. So that was this plan. Concept nine, similar concept, but instead of having haphazard planters, this one kind of has them in the middle, um, which somewhat serve as a visual indication of where the rail trail goes because you'll see somewhat of a straight line and then again, it curves around still provides access. This one just happens to use long um, or, um, long rectangular planters rather than circular, but that's just to show a different option. And then to show something different, I put stacked um, wooden fences or these could be trellises, but the idea is that from a distance, when you're looking towards the train tracks, it looks like a wall. I think hopefully an attractive wall, but when you're at a distance, you think, oh, okay, that's not the way. So you look for another, option and then when you get up close you realize oh there's actually plenty of space um, I know we don't have scale here but I think this would actually be about six feet across um, so the intention is that everybody can freely move around these it just looks like a wall from a distance all right so that's that idea and then plan 10 this is and Nat or Adrian you might want to speak more to this but this is the idea where we say you know we're all adults this is a beautiful park. Please respect your neighbors and proceed with caution. And we just keep it open. And then there are some planters. These we're thinking maybe really tall plants um, towards the, um, in front of the train track area to visually block the train tracks and just give more, more idea that this is a pedestrian area. Do you want, do you want me to talk a little bit about how this came about on Tuesday? Feel free, yeah, chime in. Or, or do you want to continue the, um, with the present? Because I'm happy to explain a little bit Whatever about Whatever you think. I just thought at this point, um, I think that's really it. So my next thought was that we would discuss these plans and then choose one or choose, you know, one of each plan and put that together as a plan, but make a decision. <laughs> so so whoever would you, like to start. Yeah, if you could like to go back a slide. Um, so, there's been a lot of back and forth over the last 
four months on um, on Junction Park since we were given, I guess it was October 28th, the, the uh, select board gave us a gave us the charge to, to, to look at this. And um, setting aside the long-term piece for now, thinking about what happens in the short term. I don't, the, the idea I think bubbled up over the last um, couple of weeks, but I think crystallized yesterday, uh, on Tuesday after the meeting with the town staff that um, maybe simple is, is more effective and maybe holding people accountable is, is it may be a way to, to be effective. So if you think about how the signage uh, of the park is now, it's dismount now, do not ride your bikes, it's get off here. It's, there are a lot of messages that um, are in some sense um, negative, right? That you'll be doing a bad thing if you do this, right? If, if you ride to the park, even if there's nobody there, you're doing a bad thing because you're supposed to dismount. So, so one of the things that came up um, I, I, and, you know, during, during the conversation was, well, what if we flip the frame on that, on that conversation, which is that when someone comes to the park from the rail trail um, on either side, they see a sign that's welcome to Junction Park. It's a shared space. Please respect your neighbors. Some variation of that, which is essentially holding bikers and others um, who are coming in, with they may be strollers and maybe skateboarders and maybe bikers and maybe walkers, that we're holding you accountable coming into this space, which is a shared community space, to um, to do the right thing. And the right thing is don't run over your neighbor if you happen to be a, a, a biker, or don't you know bring your uh, your skateboard and, and and run it over someone. It's a, it's a flipping of the idea around from punishment to we're asking you to, to step up and, and, and have the shared space. Our conversations with bikers um, are, we're not there to run people over. We're not there to make people scared. We're not there to speed to the park if there are people there. However, if there's nobody in the park, we'd like the ability to, to go through um, and, and continue on, on the trail. So having a clear path to it. Uh, the two additions near the top, um, uh, the, the, some sort of um, tall planters or, or um, a, a signifier, a visual block, so that when someone comes from the south, they see, oh, I can't go straight across. That's not where I go. I'm supposed to go to the left, right, and, and go around the club car cafe. And similarly, coming the other way, a large planter with a Welcome to Junction Park. This is a shared space. We're asking you to be accountable for your behaviors, et cetera, in here. Um, uh, and, and would direct them to go to the right and, and to the south. So this idea has bubbled up. It's probably gonna be controversial. It probably cost some flames. Um, the, one of the, some of the reasons to consider this as a short-term concept is we're not gonna be doing any changes to the park how it looks, et cetera. We're gonna be changing the, uh, we're gonna be asking people to be accountable uh, coming in. Um, it can be done very quickly in, in terms of that, in terms of uh, getting the planters in there. Um, it, it, it meets our principle of clarifying where the, where the trail goes. Um, and it allows us to uh, ask the, the town staff to look at this idea and help uh, understand from, from, from the staff perspective, uh, regulatory cost and other implications for a short-term plan. So we can pass it on to uh, the planning department and ask them to um, help put together uh, a cost proposal. And that can be done, we think reasonably quickly. And we as a committee can then tackle the much more, I think in one ways more challenging uh, aspects of the long-term plan some of which are based upon what the MBTA wants to do or doesn't want to do, et cetera. So that, that's our, that was the, the impetus behind here. And I, I think the, for, for me personally, the aha moment was this, there's so much, so much signage there about, you know, don't do this, don't do that, you know, you better do this or, you know, you're going to be a scoff law. That, that flipping that frame into asking people to take responsibility um, in, in some ways from a social perspective, I think is, um, 
it, it's different. But anyway, I I just want that this is what um, I thought was a really interesting idea, and um, it's one that I'd like us as a committee to discuss and then uh, hear what the public has to say. And I'm more than willing to be the lightning rod for bringing this idea up for anybody who doesn't like it. So committee members, uh, I'm at my subcommittee partners, any, any comments or additions? Not for me, I, no, Adrian, would you no, like I, to Yeah, I think you did it. I think you did a good job summarizing this. I think it takes some of like the pillars and the principles of the other short-term concepts, but maybe more appropriately applies them. And I think clearly helps address some of the concerns that it sounds like were raised at the last, the last meeting. Um, so it's being very tactful about and, and purposeful about where these planters are going versus kind of having a random approach of let's put them everywhere and hope that it solves um, a traffic problem in the park. So um, yeah, personally, I support this, this concept 10 out of all the short-term plans discussed. Uh, Dorcas, you had your hand up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like this concept 10 best. Uh, also for the same thing, it visually blocks the railroad tracks. So you feel like you have to go around the corner. And uh, I really don't like the idea of an obstacle course. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, other committee members, Richard. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm tending to agree. I think that the um, underlying concept is that I, I know there's a, a lot of sediment to have, sentiment to have people get off their bikes. Um, However, and this came up at the meeting uh, the other day with, with the police department, there is no enforcement mechanism for that. And consequently, that kind of, as you mentioned, this kind of negative vibe is gonna be established between somebody yelling at somebody about doing that um, at the very least. So I think that we need to carefully continue to monitor <clears throat> if there are you know, the, any kind of conflicts, but, uh, I, as we went through this process, I agree with Dorcas that it, placing objects there will actually increase the chance in my mind that there would be a, an accident among pedestrians and, and uh, cyclists who are, are walking or going through there. And I, another point is I think we ought to, again, look at the, the signage that's there and eliminate as much signage as possible and focus it really on the Junction Park area, not on the other areas because that dilutes the message that we want to make is that this is a shared space and, and people should act responsibly. Um, so I, I think that, that the, uh, the concept- Richard, uh, just, just a, cl a clarifying is, question. Just a question. Yeah. So, so when you mentioned, you mean you're referring to the um, the, the, the circle around or the half circle Correct. around Correct. the club I, park I think it's unreal. It's just not practical that people are going to, there can be a sign at the crossing that you're requested to get off your bike at the crossing. However, if I ride my bike down Cam Ave, there's no such sign. So uh, there is a crossing safety there. Um, and that would be appropriate, but to think that someone will get off their bike and then walk it through that little maze area when there's nobody around, especially, mm -hmm. uh, is again, just gives a message. You're gonna be a scoff law if you, if you do what most people, I think reasonably can do safely. Um, the other issue, one issue that we doesn't quite touch on is people coming from, from the north and mm -hmm. cutting through the parking lot. I think there's something we could, which we haven't looked at closely. There's something we could look at where after the, the trail goes over the bridge, there might be some opportunities to, again, to kind of visually direct people to the right more effectively. Um, but we have to take a closer look at that. Um, so yeah, I think the concept 10 is, is both you know, sort of philosophically the best way to go and probably safety wise and, and we continue to monitor the situation. It also avoids a possible problem of installing something and then as someone mentioned at our previous meeting, that's where it ends. Um, mm -hmm. So this, this is not a kind of project where you would say this has been installed, now we're done with it. Uh, and I, again, I appreciate the, the, the subcommittee and, and all the, the, the thoughtful comments we've received from the community on this issue. Other committee members, um, Mary Beth or Sam, any comments or thoughts? Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Please go ahead. Go ahead, Mary Beth, Sam. go ahead. Okay. Um, 
I, I like number 10, I think, better than the idea of trying to put up barriers and separate it. And, and I agree about the signage. I think the signage uh, would be more effective if it were welcoming. But the other thing about the signage is I don't think we should rely entirely on written words for signage. I think that in place of the, you know, the big circles that say walk your wheels or whatever, I think if that were replaced with maybe images of people, strollers, wheelchair users, old people using walkers, that those visuals um, have a bigger impact. First of all, they're easier to take in if you're flying by on a bike, you just take them in faster. It's a, the, the, you know, the message clicks faster. Um, and also I have thought, uh, I don't know if this is possible or feasible, but you know how you'll see people, sometimes they have like this little, like a little flat kid in their driveway indicating that there's a child that might run out on the street. If there were some way to incorporate a concept like that, that didn't take up a lot of room and not a lot of them, but just added to the side of a bench that's already existing or the side of a existing planter. Again, it's a visual, like this is a pedestrian area. This is an area where there's children, you know, like the pictures of a child chasing a ball in the street. You know, those things have an impact, I think, better than written words on signage. So at the same time, I think we do need to be welcome to Junction Park. This is a um, shared use area, just some visuals that reinforce that. Mary Beth, a, a follow-up question for you. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you. You are a member of the Disabilities uh, uh, Commission, the Commission on Disabilities, and you, you live a life of, of having to navigate complicated areas. One of the thoughts that we, we had was this idea of holding others accountable for their behavior. Um, do you have any special perspectives from your side about whether you think we can we can trust the general public to be thoughtful when they come into this space? Which just, I'm just curious if you're thinking based upon your experience. It's very hard for me to comment on that because I use that park, not the park, I use the rail trail, mostly as a bike user. Now there have been times I've used it as a wheelchair user and I have never had a problem encountering somebody driving too fast on their bike or not seeing me. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, I think if I were not a wheelchair user and I was a person who was relying on a mobility device like a walker that gave me much less stability, less agility to quickly move out of the way, I think I would feel kind of nervous about going into an area where I knew there was a lot of bicycle traffic. Um, I think that if I were, if I needed to do that, and I saw that there was lots of signage indicating that there were people like me <laughs> and that, the, that those cyclists were getting told, this is a densely populated area for lack of a better term. This is, you know, mixed use that would give me some, a little bit more reassurance that people are aware of me. People are aware of this and they're going to be thoughtful about it. And I don't have to be, you know, entirely nervous. yeah, nervous about it. So, but um, I, I don't use the park a lot as a wheelchair user. It's mostly on my, on my um, bike that I use it. Okay, thank you very much, Mary Beth. Sam, did you Welcome. have something you wanted to, to add? I, I just had a, a similar question to Richard about any thoughts on the north side of the tracks or if that was out of scope. Um, and then generally, I uh, really like this approach as well. So nice, nice job uh, to the team. Richard, any? I, I didn't hear the last part of the question. Oh, on the north side, he asked about. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, just, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking of all the way up at the bridge, you know, where you can see a straight line down the parking lot to the tracks. There's, if there's a way to make an artful partial blockage of that. Go, go this way, right, right. Go this way. Now, it, the, the, the other factor, I don't know if this has happened, Marcia can 
tell us there is supposed to be a curb cut at that location so that the residents of Concord Park can access the trail. Marcia, do you know if that has happened yet? I haven't been by there. No, it's part of this year's construction project. Okay. So <laughs> if anything, that exacerbates the problem because people will have a ramp now to go down um, to the trail. So I think, um, I, I, I forgot to mention this earlier, I, I think we, prior to our next meeting, a site visit would be appropriate. Another site visit with any interested people would be appropriate and perhaps we can go up to that area specifically and uh, take a look at it. I think so, right on the platform from the north, it's kind of hard to see how that would be blocked because you're on the platform at that point. Um, okay. Is that, is that so, so, sufficient? I think to, to Sam, to your point, it's out of scope. Um, I think if it's, if it's mentioned in our recommendation, we think that this is something else we need to think about as it relates to overall safety around the park. One of our principles is we did say, we think a little outside of the Junction Park box. Yeah, um, if, if we, necessary. Right, and if, if people cross at the, the commuter line, which was the original request of the, uh, for the town to have the, the, the trail do that, and was denied by the MBTA. If people do that, the Junction Park, welcome the Junction Park sign could have that on, if it were based on position where it would be, uh, perhaps there could be the sign there as well, the two-sided kind of thing. People would see it if they came in from either direction from the north, the, the, you know, the, the correct way and then the incorrect way. They might still see this, some similar sign to the one that we see on the screen now. So, Matt, I have one just further comment, if yes, I move a minute. Um, so something Mary Beth said kind of resonated with me. So um, I like the approach that we're kind of flipping the script of, you know, going from like negative signage to positive, right? Not don't, don't stay on your bike or dismount your bike or you're doing something bad. I, I like this positive shift. I also think what's missing even in this current proposal, and I know we're not up to like wordsmithing what this sign would look like yet, but explaining the why. I mean, the shared mm. space starts to describe that, but there may be people that don't realize that Junction Park is a heavy pedestrian zone. So even saying on this sign, entering pedestrian zone or entering pedestrian area to help explain to people the importance of just not, we don't want you biking in this area we don't want you zooming through this area but helping to explain that why and that justification i think that that'll right. further help encourage people to do the right the right thing because no one right. wants to risk you know hitting a pedestrian or you know running over a child or whatever it may be um and even yeah. mentioning that there's a crossing right in junction park that the rail trail is going this way but we've all talked about how there's you know, crossing from Woods Hill to, to 7-Eleven. So just as we start to wordsmith these, these possible signs, keeping in, in mind some of the justification that we could include. Right. Yeah. Thank you. I like that idea. Actually on the sign, when I was <laughs> trying to create this, I wanted to put an icon of a bike and then an icon of a pedestrian, but I couldn't yeah. find it as I liked. So I was like, oh, it's good enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mary Beth, you raised a really good point yeah. about incorporating those visual images that if someone is even running, they may not have time to kind mm -hmm. of catch all these words on a, on a sign, but those images speak to people very, very clearly. Yeah, I, um, I'm i glad that we're reaching an agreement, but <laughs> we're agreeing too much. I want to play devil's advocate for a moment. Does this plan indicate where the rail trail users should go clearly enough? That's my question, because that was part of the. You mean the left hand turn, uh, Tracy? The left hand the turn? Left hand turn, yeah. Yep. Um, yep. That's what I'm just wondering about. Are we, is it going to be clear enough? Uh, so I think that's clearly something we should make, no pun intended, clearly something we should uh, <laughs> um, uh, incorporate into whatever the final design is. I mean, yeah, this um, is, this the, and this is maybe what the like town a site visit is very useful because. Yeah, site visit would be useful. And also, yeah. I think. Be there and see. What would you, you know, somebody ride your, you know, you know, we have a get on a bike and yeah. we'll we'll yeah. we'll push you, you know, we won't ride through. Right. I just we wanted to give something to the town, like yeah, you know, well, I think, I think or, this, you know. this is a you know, this is a concept. It's it's good. The language is good. We could be different language. I agree with Mary Beth. I think we could look at 
some artful way of doing it as well. Um, we have some mm -hmm. very creative people in West Concord, as, we, as, as evidenced by the, the the beautiful murals that have been put up around town. Yeah. Maybe some kind of thing like that that would incorporate you're entering the park and you're seeing these nice pictures of kids and old folks and other people in the park um, or something. So, I mean, again, you don't want to get too complicated, but I think it's an opportunity to to be a little a little creative with it as well. So I think, and I think this this um, the process of of handing a rough idea, a conceptual idea, to the town, the town engineer, um, you know, to Marsh's department, to whoever else would would go into it. They have the expertise and experience to start to dive in and say, "Well, what do we do here? How do we do this?" And and I think that that's the reason we want to get this concept to them and say, you know, help us think this through. And hopefully, um, you know, in, in a few weeks, they can come back and say, we've thought this through. We think it's going to be this amount of money, this amount of time, whatever. Mm -hmm. And maybe I, I'm not saying they will. I'm just imagining they might. Um, but then as part of our final report, we can have kind of a, um, a pre-stressed, uh, you know, pre-reviewed version of, of an idea. Um, and if they discover holes or issues, regulatory or otherwise, then we can you know, we can continue to, to refine it. Um, I, 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 go ahead, Tracy. I was just going to ask another question. So there's variations of, if I can actually change the slide, there's variations of what we do at the end in front of the tracks. One has tables, um, stacked fences, um, tall planters. There's also the rectangular planters. Does anybody have an opinion one way or the other? I know anyone that they like more than the others or dislike more than the others? Um, or should we present this plan exactly as it is to the town? Well, the plan exactly as is, Tracy, is a concept that, and so it's, I think, loose enough that we're asking them to fill in some of these things that we may have okay. an opinion. I prefer uh, tall arborvitae, that's my opinion. And I like blue planters, but that's not real. I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm just, but, I'm, but I'm just saying this idea just, of yeah. blocking the crossing and having a planter that makes it very clear for riders coming from the north and those coming from the south, this is the direction of the rail trail. Those are the two main components of this. The third being um, we are shifting our frame from don't do this, this is wrong, so on, to this is a shared space, let's, um, let's respect each other, and so on. Right. Having okay. said, go ahead, Tracy, sorry. I would, okay. Oh. I would say um, those round green things, uh, which you're calling bushes, planters, trellis, uh, those probably are gonna end up being tables and chairs hmm. for outdoor eating, which Could is be. fun. Yep. Yep. Could be, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's right. good. One, one question, if you put tables there, would that, could that create any issues in terms of kind of seats or moving around in, in the transit versus if it's a planter, it's more of a stationary um, object? Yeah, I actually kind of wonder. So you see the four rectangles around the circles. Those are the actual tables and they're ah, um, you know, concrete, like bolted to the ground and have no movable chairs. I bet that's why they did it that way. Got it. Um, but they're all two-person tables, so maybe there's an opportunity to have like a four-person table. Marsha, you have a question. Just a comment. Um, some of you may have been at the little plaza between Concord Tea Cakes and Twin Seafood. In the summertime, they have a planter um, that's maybe about three feet tall, and they put in tall grasses so to block the, vi the view of um, that parking area behind. Um, the seating area and dumpsters, and so and it works very well. So, something along those lines in this location may, or something with a trellis uh, that we can grow plants along that would that would create more of that visual screen. I think is really the the key um, that you're trying to achieve um, in in blocking in 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 separating um, yeah, the, the the visual separation between those two locations. I'm sorry. Marsha, is that area managed by the town or is that like a Concord Tea Cakes private um, space? Um, I 
think it's managed by TK. There, there's an agreement. There's a piece of land in there that is the town of Concord, but um, there is an agreement between the owners of those two buildings uh, okay. to help with that. So it, it was um, the town invested the funds in putting in the pavers and the landscaping. And then uh, the, the building owners have allowed those sales, those overhead features to be connected to their buildings. So it's it's been a That's real okay. partnership. That's helpful. So I'd like to, um, um, in, it, in one of the things we talked about last time was trying to um, uh, finish this up, finish up our, our meetings after 90 minutes. So I'm, I'm cognizant of the time I think we've made a lot of progress in the committee perspective. I'm also aware that members of the public may have strong feelings about the safety issue. Um, and so um, it's not that we've forgotten it. We, we're just trying to take a different approach to it. Uh, but I'd like to open up the conversation to members of the public uh, with questions or thoughts and then come back to the committee and ask for, uh, based on that discussion, ask for a motion to uh, put this idea forward um, and pass it on to the town for them to do a preliminary thinking on it. Uh, and Marcia, is that the right way for us to ask the town that basically say, would you guys look at this? I think so. Um, I'd have to talk further with, with Public Works to see if, okay. they, if it's within their, their capacity right now um, as okay. they're gearing up for, for construction season. Um, I don't know how much time or effort they would be able to, to devote okay. to this. Okay. All right, but good. I, so I might be able uh, to check, I'm, I'm sorry, I might be able to check with our um, design consultant as well, Matt Kern, okay. to see if there's some input we could get from him. Okay. Uh, so members of the public, comments, questions on, on this concept 10. Um, and, and could you um, provide your name and address? And the, the first hand raise is, um, uh, select board member Matt Johnson. Hi, Matt Johnson, member of the select board speaker, myself, uh, 21 Winthrop Street. And uh, I just was curious about the uh, accessibility aspects of the planters. I mean, I just scanned through the ADA standards for accessible design, and it looks like you need like five feet approximately, I think, minimum distance for uh, being able to have accessibility around whatever planters. I can't tell from this whether that's there in this design. It seemed really challenging with the concept nine uh, to be able to achieve that. But I was just thinking about, for example, somebody that, well, in this it, in concept 10, one other advantage is like someone that had an accessible trike or something and was trying to navigate through here. Um, you know, they wouldn't have to go past those planters because if they're following the, the trail, they'd come right. around the bend and, and they wouldn't encounter any of them. Um, but I just still wonder, too, as commuters are trying to get to the train, you know, and they, they run that labyrinth of, of mm -hmm. planters, is that ever going to be an issue? I just, you know. So, so those were the, the main things that struck me. It was just making sure we, we had accessibility uh, considered. Uh, and, and again, I'm no expert on it, but, and that, yeah, we don't block off certain classes of users. Got it. Thank you for the comments, uh, Select Board Member Johnson. Thank you. And I think that means we just need to make sure when we, when we mm -hmm. review it that we've taken the ADA um, ideas into, into mind. Um, Sally and Bill Satterthwaite. Uh, thank you, this is lovely. And I'm um, so grateful for this gift you've given us. After all the time you've put into it, um, your ingenuity and thoughtfulness is super. Um, I had the same concerns about the placement of the planters. I can't tell from the, the picture whether they might be too much in the way or not. My suggestion would be that we not have an oblong thing right there. Well, that we just make sure we, we orient them sensibly, not only with regard to um, the tracks and everything, but the doors to the whistle stop. Um, make sure that we don't have one right in front of one of those Got doors. Um, Great. But this is lovely. It's a good Thank point. The circle might be too big too. It's not necessarily to scale. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm sorry, Bill, you have a comment also? I, I just have a quick, first of all, I think that the concept of the positive signs and the pictures are, are really good. I, I like this as an experiment. Let's, let's assume most bikers I find are, in my experience, having done a lot of biking, um, are very responsible and pay attention to pedestrians. And one can think of all sorts of problems, but they don't usually happen. Think of, you know, a long Storrow Drive between Storrow Drive and the river, the numbers of people that go along there uh, and share the space. I think that, um, and so, and I like this because it's minimalist and it could inform the final decision. You know, if this works well, then, one's concerns about a final proposal are, are much less. If it doesn't work well, then it informs what can be done to make the final proposal better. So I, I think that this trust people. The other thing I just wanted to say is I don't like the oval planters. This is a park where people sit and eat. The cafe and the tables near the cafe are, are used now at all times of the day. I'd put, ta I'd put tables and chairs in. Duly noted, duly noted, thank you. There already are, are two planters. There already are two planters there. They're little, these are bigger. Okay, and I forgot to mention that I, I hope people won't go for concept nine because it's too laney. Yeah. And I think it could set up a bad vibe. I think we're focused on, on 10 right now. Other uh, public comments? Okay. Um, any other discussion among, uh, among members about concept 10? I, I have one more thought yes. on that. That um, w if we do this kind of visual signage, that the visuals not just be um, for bikers about pedestrians. I think there's just as much value to using images of bicycles that show pedestrians like, oh, this is an area where bicycles are passing. This is part of a, the biker part of the trail and that they also use caution. So that we they balance are, that. Okay. Yeah, we balance I was, it, everyone's like, accountable. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking of the, um, the share the road signs that you have on the road where there's a cyclist and a um, car. So I'm mm -hmm. thinking we have a sign person create a park version where it's a, a cyclist and a person and maybe somebody with a stroller or on a walker yep. or something. And that's our little share the park. <laughs> so I, I think we're gonna have a, I think we're gonna have a chance as a committee, um, assuming uh, we make a motion and we decide to pass this to the town for their initial thinking that we're gonna have a chance before we do the final recommendation uh, to wordsmith the signs and shapes of the, of the planters and exact location. And this is to Richard's point about actually getting out there and maybe looking at it. But I'd like a motion, um, if there's no other discussion, uh, a motion uh, for the committee to approve concept 10 as uh, a short term, a recommendation for the short term that we would like the town uh, staff to do the appropriate uh, initial review. I don't know quite what that means, but it's something along those lines. And Marcia can help guide us uh, on that. And and um, so that that's. But I'd, uh, I'd like to have a motion to do that as long as uh, committee is okay with that. I second that. Is everybody on board <laughs> voting? Oh, <laughs> well, you can vote. Okay. okay. So uh, we will take a roll call vote on the motion to. Uh, take concept 10 as described here, uh, still need some work, uh, but pass it on to, uh, on to the town, in, in quotes, and Marsha will direct us for that, uh, to have them do a preliminary look and, and come back to us with issues, comments, questions, et cetera. Um, so roll call vote. Um, uh, Ms. Boardman? Aye. Mr. Pollander? Aye. Ms. Hansen? Aye. Ms. Miller? Aye. Um, Mr. Stearns? Pardon my talk here. Um, Ms. Barker? Aye. And uh, Mr. Welch votes aye as well. The motion is passed. Um, and this is great. And so we're, we, we are um, going to move on to the next item on our agenda. Or just a, a yes. couple of things. 
All right, so just a um, couple takeaways from the meeting with the staff um, to share with you all. This topic of is the MBTA really willing to give us additional land? Is this even an option to consider? And to that end, there is a meeting set up, I think in the end of April, perhaps, to discuss this with the MBTA. Um, that brings into into consideration the parking, basically. And these are for the uh, these are for the long term sorry, uh, yes. items, correct? Okay, thank you. Yes, long term. Um, sorry, I didn't really say anything on the. Now that we've That's got okay. this is keep going, so we're doing, you're doing good. Term. Uh, we have to talk about the bioretention bio basin. Um, if we get, apparently that was quite expensive to implement and it serves a purpose for 100 year floods, um, somewhere for the water to go. So if you don't have a bioretention basin, you can have drains or other systems. So we need to understand what the alternatives are if we get rid of it. Um, we also wanted to further understand the width minimum and if that only applies if you create a physical barrier, um, just learn more about that. And then the safety officer brought up a very good um, very good point about that emergency vehicles need to be able to access people in the park. And right now, because the path is 12 feet wide, it's not too hard to do that. So it's just something we need to think about as we're designing. And then of course, there's the cost. That was the last yep. area that we brought. So going forward, we'll talk about long-term, we'll research these questions, meet about the MTA, and now it's on to someone else. Okay, thank you very much. And, and my thanks to the uh, subcommittee for their, their hard work and many hours and to everybody who's provided input on the, on the short-term side. Um, I'd like to move to um, the next item on the agenda, which is not this. Um, where am I here? Excuse me one second, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna, I was gonna talk about the, um, what do I got here? Trail okay, code. not what I want. Pardon me here, let me. Can you see my screen? Oh shit. No. Okay. Look, it's Hold coming. Second, please. Thank you. Nothing. I am frozen now. Do you want to send it to me, Nat, and then I can do it for you? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. It looks frozen. While this is going on, I, I, I would like to, us to, prior to adjournment, schedule another site visit prior to our next meeting. Um, I think that'd be helpful to take a look at Concept 10 as well as looking at these the longer term issues. So That's hopefully we can set that up. We can think about maybe the earlier in that week. It's a possibility. Um, earlier which week? I think our next meeting is May 5th. Um, let me look. About, yeah. um, and so town meeting is first, probably go to the second. So okay. perhaps the third or the fourth, we could schedule a time. Or, and or it could mm -hmm. simply be before our, our next meeting, possibly. If we meet at Harvey yeah. Wheeler, maybe we can just uh, have a site visit, you know, at um, a little bit earlier that evening and then retire to... Uh, to the Woods Hill table for our meeting or something like that. <laughs> I think we would be able to get a little bit more accomplished with the plan if we did the site visit earlier. So we actually have some time to adjust the plans. Okay, yeah. Um, I'm, so I'm, if, uh, if we did like, um, I don't know, the 26th perhaps or 28th maybe. That's fine. Yeah. Those <laughs> dates work for me. Can, can, uh, can people hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, um, so let's take up the, um, the site visit and um, a little bit later on, yes. I'd like to just go through this this um, uh, piece of work that I put together here, which is not this, it is here. What's going on with my screen yeah. here? Nope, that's not it. Close that yeah, down. 21, yeah. Close that down. Recent. Here we go. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for the technical uh, challenges here. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, the next portion is to talk about the um, Bruce Women Rail Trail trail counts. Um, we do counting in order to understand who's using the trail and when uh, to learn more about 
um, you know, if we have to make investments, um, you know, how the trail is being used, understand the year on year growth, capture flows to better understand the impact of the trail on the local community. Um, and then help the, the town plan across all forms of transportation and recreation. We did a trail count last May. Uh, the goal was to get a baseline of trail traffic before the Route 2 bridge opened. Um, that we had fully staffed with volunteers, 27 counting slots in Concord. Uh, there were two slots in Acton, um, you know, two places in Acton where the count was carried out. And then <clears throat> the results are shared with the central transportation planning staff, bike and pedestrian coordinator, Casey Cooper, who came out and presented to us last year. We missed the fall trail count. Um, I take the blame for that, but we, we missed doing it. So we're now back in the spring and we have, um, we want to do a, a trail count this, uh, the, the week of May 18th. Um, in the same three locations, which as you can see in the map here, one is at the Neshoba Brook Bridge, right here, number one. Number two is just south of um, the, main, uh, the Main Street uh, crossing where the kiosk is and the bike repair station is. And the third is in Powder Mill. Um, and, the, and we got some very good data um, last year on it. Last year, we, we counted 1,600 bicyclists across those 27 uh, time slots, 1,700 pedestrians, uh, over 3,000 users, and there were 68 other users, skaters, unicyclists, dog walkers, potentially. Um, the, the, the data annualized um, showed that in Concord, it's potentially uh, 143,000 trips done on the trail based upon the data that we captured. So already you can see it's a, it's a, it's a well-used trail. Um, we hope to update that in 2022. Um, the dates are the 10th, 11th, and 12th, which are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, on Thursday, we do an extra count uh, for school opening or school closing um, to get a sense of what the traffic on the trails is like uh, in terms of use by um, kids and parents going to and from school. Um, then we have two weekend slots. As I said, the same three locations that we did. Um, and our role is to develop a list and reach out to volunteers to staff each of the slots, uh, coordinate and collaborate with the friends of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail Advisory Committee um, who uh, will do act in, but may also provide us with people to help us in, in Concord. Uh, we want to get the, 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 the tally sheets and the instructions to all volunteers. Uh, we send out a reminder email before their time slot. Uh, last year, I personally checked in on each location for every time slot to make sure A, there was coverage and B, that um, you know, people knew what they needed to do. Uh, we provide a backup if necessary. And then we capture the tally sheet information and send it to CTPS. So, uh, what I'm looking for is um, a couple of members to help me. I'll still drive this, but uh, maybe spend a, a few hours over the next couple of weeks helping me to uh, get this set up. Uh, we have a list of 23 names already of people who've who volunteered in the past, and we will ask other members uh, to, to see if they could um, send to their networks people who might be interested in doing it. The two-hour tally, you sit in one place, you just mark uh, cyclists, walkers, and any other uh, information that might be, might be of interest. Um, so I'm reaching out to ask who on the committee might be able to uh, help in helping me do this. So thank you for letting me present. Nat, there's one, one item that I, I, uh, we should confirm that school is out on Thursdays. I, I don't know. Um, oh. That's I'm, not a, a good I'm not a parent, but uh, <laughs> who has school age children here? School is half day on Wednesday. Is that what you're referring to? The half day? Yeah, the half day. Yeah. So Wednesday. it's Wednesday. So that we'll need to modify the, the schedule. So it should be Wednesday. We do the uh, okay the school count. Great. Thank you. Thank you. That's why we have such great uh, variety on this committee because they can keep me keep us honest. Um, any. Um, I'm, I won't embarrass anybody by asking them now, but if you would please reach out to me um, and just let me know if you'd be uh, willing to help uh, and any members of the public, if you, if you want, 
Um, you can either contact me directly or send a note to bfrtac at concordma.gov. Um, and then I had one other item that I wanted to cover and ask the committee for. Uh, before I move on to that, any questions from the committee? Uh, no, um, I was just going to say, if you want to put something together, I can post on um, the monsters. Oh, that would be great. Thank you. Get some volunteers. Thank you very much. Uh, it, I will end up time. doing this, even if nobody helps, but it's always more fun to have somebody help out. So thank you. Okay. The... Um, the next item is a is a is a personal uh, crusade of mine, um, as some of you know. But I wanted to ask the uh, I wanted to share with the committee an idea, and ask for um, uh, permission to to proceed. So, building on this trail count idea, there are tools out there that uh, actually automatically count uh, riders. If you ride across the Route Two A bridge in Acton. You may notice uh, heading north on the right side is a, I think it's a blue metal post, kind of you know, a couple of inches wide. That's actually an automated trail counter. And it counts the number of cyclists that go past that spot. And I didn't even know they had one there until I asked the uh, MassDOT bike pad coordinator. Uh, um, uh, bike uh, technology, counting technology, is available that accurately counts pedestrians and cyclists, both, both classes, 24 seven. Here are three examples. Um, this yellow post here um, counts cyclists and, and walkers. This little box here um, measures both. And then here on this bike route sign, you can see an example of what it looks like in the inside. The, this, these are older versions. The new ones are, they, they run for two years on a, on a single battery. You can download the data automatically. Um, uh, some of these are permanent, some are movable. And what I'd like to do or get the committees okay on is um, the friends of the Bruce Freeman have indicated a willingness to consider a grant work, work request to purchase multiple counters for the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. And um, I'd like to, see if the committee is uh, interested in having a supply. I'm happy to do the work, um, but I wanted to kind of get input and thoughts either for or against uh, applying for a grant to get those. And I'm assuming, Marcia, you'll have a couple of comments or questions that you wanna um, maybe add to this. So that's my pitch. Interesting. Now, what's the downside of doing this? Well, I can't think of one, but I think I'm biased. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a data junkie, as you probably all know, and this idea of understanding how our trails are being used. I mean, I, we had talked a little bit last year, but maybe doing something at the Powder Mill Road conduit to understand, is there a lot of traffic going through there and thinking about, um, you know, usage around, around White Pond. Um, I don't think there's a downside. I think, it, I think it's helpful. I think that one of the trade-offs is movable versus permanent. And do we want to have some that we can move around versus, you know, pick pick two or three places where we have them, and then we can always be aware of what the traffic's like. I mean, yeah, you know, for example, in Junction Park, you could differentiate between walkers and bikers and get twenty four seven data on, you know, what's the uses in the park. Yeah. Um, no, that's that's a good point of clarification. So these counters not only are counting like people going by, but they can also determine the mode of transportation. Yes. Yes. Interesting. Can. Yeah. So it differentiates. It doesn't count everybody the same. It could. It differentiates. How does it do that? Yes. Oh. I I can't speak to it, but the, <laughs> uh, the new counters very cool. um, are smart enough to do that. I I think it would I would support it because it it would um, certainly support funding for the ongoing maintenance and. Um, uh, enforcement along the trail itself, you know, making sure that we have the resource, we're investing the resources we need to keep the, the trail in good condition for all to use. Okay. The other area that would help is, I know there's a request from the West Concord group about um, shoveling or um, snow blowing in the winter. And if we knew the usage in the summer, then we could look at the usage in the winter and say, hey, there's a huge difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'd, have, we'd have data to back up hypotheses and, and understand. Yeah. So I, I'm a, as I said, I'm biased about this and 
I wanted to make sure the committee would have a chance to think through it. Should we make a motion to vote? Other, other questions, comments from, from other members? Anything from the uh, from the public? Questions, comments? I'd say, um, can I have a motion to, um, what would the motion be? I guess it's to um, approve us applying for a grant from uh, the Friends of the Bruce Women Rail Trail to install counter, pay for installing counters on the trail. Locations and number to be determined. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, my little cheat sheet here with everybody on here. Um, Ms. Boardman? Aye. Um, yes. Okay. Mr. Follender? Aye. Ms. Hansen? I approve. Ms. Miller? Aye. Mr. Stearns? Aye. Ms. Barker? Aye. And Mr. Welch is, is aye. The motion passes unanimously. Um, and I will keep the uh, committee up to date as to the progress of the grant, et cetera. So thank you. Other business liaison work? Um, hmm. Any other uh, input uh, from, from the members in terms of? Uh, setting a date for a site visit. Okay. I can do that very quickly. Yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, does the 26th work for anyone? So, um, does the subcommittee need to do any work before we have a site visit, or does the subcommittee do work after the site visit? What's the subcommittee chair's ideas behind that? I, was thinking I guess one question. So this site visit would be um, like publicized as a meeting. So hopefully we'd have members of the public there as well. So I think the only work that may make sense to do ahead of time is maybe have some type of handout showing the specifics of concept 10. So as people are walking around, mm -hmm. we maybe have points that we wanna make sure that we're, we're referencing and reviewing. Um, so I don't know if we need a meeting mm -hmm. to do that work or if we can do that work just based on the information shared today. But I think it'd be helpful to have something that solidifies a little bit more what this concept is so okay. people can walk through it. And maybe it's very close, Tracy, to what you shared today with like a couple of yeah. maybe updated call outs. Um, so, but that's the only work yeah, I can I think, think that we would need to do I, prior. I was thinking that one would be more for long term. Um, so I don't know if there'd yeah, be anything else we would need for long term. I agree. I think the site visit would include both. Um, okay. And we haven't really, the feedback I think from the other meeting was that it's, it seems as though longer term things that are going to happen on, well, on, how do I look at what, the west side uh, are the most likely scenarios. So I think we can pretty much eliminate things that are going to take the path over to the east toward 7-Eleven. Uh, um, I don't so, know. I yeah, I don't know. I kind of disagree with that. I think it depends okay, on what well, happens. Okay, well, we didn't agree. We <laughs> duke it out right now. Um, we we well, have, and in we that many case, we could still, that would give, we can we could present all of those longer term, have that available, and this is how it would look, and get a tape measure yeah. out and get a sense of what it would be. Yeah. Um, for even I think we have to start whittling down the plans before we do a site visit. I think that if there's like a site visit, and we're trying to yeah. walk people through six plus mm -hmm. concepts, it becomes a lot so to- want to whittle that down at the next meeting then. Yeah. Well, we're having the meeting with the MBTA, right? So I think ideally we would have that happen and then have the site visit. That, yeah, but- what, what, I, I think what Adrian is saying is that MBTA visit, and we also need to whittle down some of the plans before- And then do a site visit. Right? Well, so, I'm thinking so, the MBTA will whittle it down for us pretty easily. It could. Oh, we don't know that. It could. You know. it, could. <laughs> it, may, it may not remove that much ambiguity. Um, yeah, I mean, the MBTA might not be amenable at that staff level, but there's it's a, it's a political institution, so who knows right. down the road. And we'll find. I mean, we don't know. We'll find out. We right? they, they they agreed to have the conversation, which to me is a big step forward. But I haven't I haven't lived with the MBTA for thirty years, like. <laughs> 
some of the staff <laughs> members have, right? Um, so, so maybe we have, have maybe we maybe we let that meeting happen. We do a quick subcommittee meeting to debrief on that meeting, like maybe that whittle down plans, and then yeah. do a site visit and see if we can somehow do all of that before this next maybe, meeting on May fifth. Yeah. I, I like that better. I know. So let the subcommittee whittle it down to to three or two or something, rather than the full committee. Yeah, well, I mean, everyone's welcome to join, but I think we're probably more likely to have time to, unless we want to wait till the 5th, but I think that's maybe too long if we have to get something to the select board then by June, we're just running yeah, out of meetings. Yeah. No, I, I, I like that. I like that idea of MBTA meeting, subcommittee meets, we whittle it down. So Tracy, you're going to have to make some hard decisions. Um, but about how you feel. It sounds like she's about, not about making certain the one, one I want, though. What? <laughs> but what if she's not making the one I want? <laughs> well, this is the beauty of a of a of a democratic process, right? We, we work as a committee, and we we'll work our way through it. Okay. Now, what's the date of that meeting with the MBTA? That's like the last week of April. Twentieth. Oh, the twentieth. Currently scheduled for the twentieth. And so I'm not going to say that we'll get an answer or not, but we, I think we'll be a step closer to understanding yeah. their state of mind. Um, so we could do a subcommittee meeting the following week. week. Yeah, yeah. And I do, I do think as a subcommittee, being a member of that subcommittee, but not the chair, with all due respect to Tracy, um, I, I do think we Thank should you. whittle it down to, to two or three and then, um, then come back to the overall committee. It's going to be hard work, but I think we need to do it. So as far as the site visit, what is what are we saying there? That the site visit will be the subcommittee meeting or are there different? No, no, no. The site visit would happen after we whittle down because then, then the site visit will be about, oh. uh, these are the two or three we're talking about. What does the public think? Okay. I, I think the site visit would help us whittle it down unless I just go myself personally. Well, maybe, maybe the... Um, Maybe we each, well, if we all go together, we're gonna to have to make an official meeting. But if we each go, go over and kind of think about what we want, and because I'm gonna definitely do that. I'm gonna go over and, and take well, a look. It, it, uh, it once could more. be an official meeting at the, at the park. Yeah, okay. I, mean, I, I don't think we have to have everything sorted out just because we're inviting the public. I think we can have our meeting, which helps us progress and they can come if they want. Um, but when we have a more organized meeting, we could also have another meeting that just happens to be in the park, and that could be when we actually roll out whatever we have decided. So I think I think if we're going to ask the public to show up again, this is my opinion that that. Well, I wasn't going to ask the public to show up. I think we need to go, and if they want to come, that's fine. But I wasn't going to ask. The official site. Them for that. Yeah. Okay. Just have so, a so we, we're going to do a subcommittee there. meeting at the park. At the park, okay, I got it. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little slow, guys. <laughs> well, that's what I'm proposing. We'll don't have more, to do probably that. after our next full committee meeting, there'd be a side visit for the rest of the, for everybody. Right, got it, got it. I mean, by then we hopefully, okay. yeah, hopefully yeah. we'll be down that's, to- That's good, that's beautiful. Okay, um, So date of the subcommittee meeting at the park? Does the 26th work for you guys or the 28th? Probably um, does, yeah. Let's tentatively do that. We can we can do a formal agenda shortly. Marsha, any comments or questions from your side? Okay. And it can um, be the time that's convenient for the subcommittee members, whatever that is. Yes. And I'm not going to insist it's either before five or after seven. I'm just going to let you guys, I'm going to let the chairwoman uh, make up the decision as to the time. Now, Matt, you see, there is, is a person who's got their hand raised. Did you see? Yes, that? I do see that. I'm, I'm just waiting to finish this piece of the oh. conversation up. Um, Adrian, what do you want to do? Because I actually work remotely Tuesdays and Thursdays, so it's not too bad for me to go at a random time. Or we could make it like a morning thing if you guys, if, mm -hmm. if like 8 a.m. works for you guys. Yeah. Um, Usually after nine, just like once my kids are off to school, yeah. it's easier for me to borrow like work time than like try to navigate kids stuff. Okay. So we're saying the 26th or the 28th. Yeah, or should we just do lunchtime then? Is that okay? Or um, sure. I don't have my work calendar up. Um, I, I think I'll have flexibility both those days. But why don't we? Why don't we take this offline? And we still okay. have to publish the date. 
So we'll work out it. We'll work out a date. Yeah, we have three minutes to meet the. Yes, we have three minutes, and <laughs> I'd like to. Um, I'd like to call on Cynthia Katz. You have your hand up. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hi, Cynthia Katz, Twenty Conant Street, in West Concord. Um, I came in late, so maybe you've discussed this, and maybe really this is more a question for Marsha and Matt. Um, so this is a coming together of a rail trail in a park. And I sometimes feel like the park aspect gets lost. And I think another thing that really gets lost is this is a major central place in West Concord. I was there the other day and I was actually shocked at how well used it was in March. And I just um, am really concerned. I walk on the rail trail all the time. <clears throat> it's clear that more than half the people who are on the rail trail are walkers. And yet the big concern is we can't seem to figure out a way to get people on bikes to just get off their bikes and walk through a park. Well, so I, I guess the question is, how is the decision? It, is it gonna be the Bruce Freeman rail trail um, committee who's going to make the decision as to what the solution is or how how is the decision going to be made so well, uh, thank you Ms. Katz for, for your comments the process is we make a recommendation to the select board and they have the power to make the decision we have no authority budgeting uh, etc we're, we're we're doing all the, the legwork and we're going to make a recommendation to the select board. So there's still a lot of steps. In the okay, thanks. I, yep. Just hope the law that the park and the pedestrian moving timing of the park is something that's in the forefront of your minds. It has been. Yeah. Safety and separation we, uh, have, have been at the forefront and what we've been trying to, what we've been trying to do for the last four and a half months. Um, yeah, I think the meeting was recorded. So we had a good conversation about it. If you wanted to just watch the recording and I think we were a little more succinct today than sometimes. So. Okay, great. Um, where, would I, where would I find that recording, Tracy? That's on the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail um, website uh, it, under ConcordMA.gov. It, it won't be posted until tomorrow or Monday. Okay, great, thanks so much. Um, can I uh, have a motion to uh, uh, not terminate the meeting? What's the word I'm looking for? Adjourn. 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 I know you're so <laughs> shocked that it's 8.30. You're saying those the, words. I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to, I'm, I I'm trying to adjourn. You're dumbfounded. Uh, I'm working at it, guys. I'm working at it. So a motion to adjourn the meeting? Second. Um, uh, Ms. Boardman? Aye. Mr. Pollender? Aye. Ms. Hanson? Aye. Ms. Miller? Aye. Mr. Stearns? Aye. Ms. Barker? Aye. Aye. Um, the meeting of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail Committee is ended as of 8.30 today. I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you, everyone.